Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 28th, and right now we are taking a look at a mid-level water vapor loop. Check out this system here spinning off the west coast of Vancouver Island here. This is keeping a general onshore flow across some of the Pacific Northwest. We'll help kick off some thunderstorms mainly across British Columbia, or maybe even some of the coastal terrain as well. And we'll watch this system here as it continues to keep us nice and seasonable here across Pacific Northwest. And don't take that for granted here. Some other places are not so lucky to have access to a trough like this in the summertime months here. So as always, we'll take a look at the extended forecast as well. Precipitation, temperature potential, looks like we might start to warm up a bit here as well. And some signals for above average precipitation, mainly inland across the region. Now looking at SeaTac this morning, look at this fog right here. It kind of cuts off right near SeaTac. I believe this was creeping over the airport this morning and caught the airport off guard a little bit here. I heard seven missed approaches in a short time frame go over my house here. So yeah, it woke me up there and I believe that may have that little bit of a marine layer there kind of caught them off guard visibility wasn't extremely low but it was down around a mile i think maybe a mile and a half and yeah so that was probably the reason for that if you were at SeaTac airport this morning some delay is possible with that but you can see across much of the cascades a lot of sunshine there you can see mount rainier here on the goes 18 satellite imagery and you can see all that forest fire smoke here across some of central and southern oregon some high clouds traversing the region shouldn't be too big of a deal on this marine layer will be burning off during the day today you can see it encroaching into some of the valley areas there along the Olympic Mountains, for example, also. This is looking at, check it out, last 24 hours here. We're looking at lightning strikes, and you can see that across some of the Blue Mountains down there. And yeah, so hopefully that's not kicking off any fires down there across northeast Oregon there, but pretty interesting stuff here. At least it shows the uh, lightning strikes here from the last 24 hours. Gives firefighters a heads up on where they meet, need to be watching here. And then, of course, we've got satellite imagery that can help us spot fires as well. Now, looking at the nice portable home weather station here, click on the link down below if you want to save 10% off. Great smartphone app, stores all the data for you in the cloud, and you can see the map here. You can zoom in on these locations and kind of see individual stations, click on them, see all their data, or you can keep your station private as well. Highly recommend that station. Look at SeaTac yesterday, 79 degrees right at average. That was your typical late July Seattle day. And you can see it is our dry time of the year. I've been talking about this 103 degree day back in 2009. Seemed like a pretty extreme record until we got to 2021 and that giant heat dome set up over the Pacific Northwest. Fire weather and concerns. Saturday, Sunday winds are going to pick up a bit again here east of the Cascades. Dry relative humidities and we got breezy conditions out there. And as always, just kind of consider things elevated here across Pacific Northwest at any time in the summer months. And this is, uh, these grass fires are the real deal here. Those are pretty big one out there by Ritzville that I saw last week here. So, you know, report that to law enforcement when you do see those forest fires burning there along into the road areas. And this is a nice graphic here from National Weather Service Pendleton, Oregon. And this is a red flag. Again, low relative humidities, abundant lightning, dry vegetation can make it difficult to get the new fires under control here. Just a heads up, the graphic here from National Weather Service Medford, Oregon, created yesterday. And now this is the potential for some strong thunderstorms or even severe across some of southwest Montana out there. You can see Boulder, Helena included there, Wisdom, Sheridan. Beautiful country out there, just kind of skirting Yellowstone there as well. You can see the heavy downpours, hail, gusty winds, and frequent lightning out there. This is issued actually very early this morning. Now we're looking at the thunderstorm outlook categories and we usually deal with the marginal in pacific northwest but sometimes we get slight and i think we got enhanced there in 2020 as well moderate and high usually uh, off to the east of the cascades with the better moisture but if you want to ever see what these mean here you can see the definitions on the national weather service page now we're looking at the wider view of things here general trough and ridge position here's alaska bc washington oregon there the big ridge down across the southwest you can see our troughing kind of hanging out here across pacific northwest keeping us from getting too darn warm here across the area and you can see this trough just kind of hanging out here here we are going on into monday morning shown here trough still remains not exceptionally strong or anything but it does kind of keep an onshore flow going as we go through the extended a little bit here you can see the ridge trying to build in here a little bit through the end of next week here as we get towards seafair weekend and that could warm things up here across pacific northwest the gfs even showing a couple 90 degree days for seattle put that into motion. You can kind of see that ridge trying to nudge its way in here, but the trophy not too far away here, not allowing a big ridge of high pressure to really dominate our weather. As you can see, this monster ridge just set up across from the Southwest USA in some of these model runs. So don't take this trough for granted here across the Pacific Northwest, folks. It is definitely a blessing. 
And this is looking at the European ensemble member here. So as we scroll out, you can kind of see that troughing hang out. And this one goes out about 15 days. And you can see this troughing kind of hanging on the ridge off to the east. So better chances off to the east for warmer temperatures here as we go on through the extended forecast. You can see the European showing that big ridge setting up down there as well. And the general troughing here across Pacific Northwest. Again, don't take that for granted. It's definitely a blessing. And we're going to skip that one for now. I think you guys got the gist of it there. This is Klamath Falls, Oregon. Next 15 days on the GFS model here. You can see you know, some nice temperatures out there and backed off in the extreme heat a little bit here as we go through the next weekend, you know, August 4th, 5th, and 6th there. This is Brookings, Oregon. No sign of any offshore wind event here that would really bring the temperatures up across the area down there as well, but not bad. Nice and comfortable out there. Maybe bring a jacket some of these days, though. This is Portland, Oregon. You can see maybe a couple days as we get towards next weekend here, getting up towards 90 degrees, but nothing too extreme for this time of year. Typical summertime above average stuff showing up there. Seattle, something similar. I even had it a little bit higher there for Friday. So heads up for that. We may be looking at a warm seafair weekend here across the Seattle metro. This is the average temperature for this time of year. You can see as we get into early August, we have the slow march downward as we start to move towards our fall months here. So enjoy summertime while it lasts here across the region. You can see we do look like we're going to warm back up above average. We go through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday here in Seattle. This is Seattle Metro, kind of showing some interesting signals off through the extended here. Nothing that you want to start hanging your hat on just yet. We're just kind of watching stuff, but you can see, look at this 24-hour period here. 1.1 inches, 1 inches in one of the ensemble. The control not showing anything, and a lot of these ensemble members are still dry, of course. This is just purely a fantasy wish cast at this point. This is Victoria, kind of showing something similar here as well. Again, purely fantasy. This is looking at the European. This goes out about 144 hours, and you can see kind of the spin in the atmosphere there with precipitation along the bc coastline some of the interior better chances for thunderstorms and yeah not much showing up here across washington oregon or a lot of portions of idaho you have to go off into the higher terrain here to get some precipitation or maybe some thunderstorm activity there but this is only out through wednesday night we'll take a look at the extended here in a moment and this is our troughing here 18,000 feet and kind of see the winds this low pressure system kind of bouncing around out here upper level low i should say and kind of kicks through bc here and it's quick kind of replaced by similar troughing out here kind of keeping that onshore flow going not allowing us to warm up here in the short term now this is 10 meter wind speed kind of going with the onshore flow here you can see some gusty winds as you go through the weekend here on the east slopes of the cascade so heads up for that through eastern oregon washington some portions of idaho here the low relative humidities easy to start fires this time of year i mean heck even west of the cascades you can do it now this is looking at lightning flash density potential. As we scroll through today, you can see BC and then uh, thunderstorm activity across from the southwest Montana into the higher terrain of Idaho here as well. And again, you saw those lightning strikes we had across some of the Blue Mountains. That can't be ruled out here over the next few days as well. Kind of a repeat of that potentially. As you can see, some of that activity maybe even kick one off across the Cascades. We go through Saturday, no promises there. But of course, BC, Idaho, Montana, better chances as you go north and east. And we go through Sunday afternoon again here kind of a repeat there across eastern bc montana here yeah so we'll see how that trends here nothing too extreme showing for washington oregon right now six to ten day temperature probability outlook you can see the above average conditions as it start to go on in through the august 6th and following weekend here and this is all the way out through august 10th kind of that above average signal again here this is looking at six to 10 day precipitation and you can clearly see the signal here across Idaho. I don't see it quite this strong in the models here, but they're kind of latching onto that and a little bit of below average here across Washington. That would include some of BC there. And I don't know if that makes sense with that trough kind of hanging out with the higher terrain up there. But we'll see how this trends. This is 8 to 14 day all the way through August 10th here. Kind of includes a lot of the Pacific Northwest here. And again, we'll watch this trend closely. Now, this is looking at the 10 day anomaly. You can see above average generally sub across some portions of Idaho and Southwest Montana, but for the most part below average here across some of BC and Washington showing up in the European in the 10 day run here. This is the uh, European ensemble mean as well. You can see above average some of the Intermountain West here versus the West Coast. And we're already so dry at this time of year here. This is not a very fun site here. You wish you could get a little bit more rainfall out of some of these systems. This is the GFS ensemble mean as well. Good model agreement. As you can see, this makes a little bit more sense to me. Maybe some of the higher terrain at BC get above average with some of the trophy hanging out here. But the lower elevations really tough to get precip at this time of year. And this is the seven-day significant fire uh, potential. And you can see mostly for the 
east slopes here, but again, it really across the entire Pacific Northwest, just consider it elevated. Nothing too extreme right now, but just have a heads up for that. Now this is looking all the way back at January 3rd. Check out some of this drought across California, Oregon, and Montana here, Idaho. Now watch as we go to current. You can see Colorado and a lot of Wyoming being erased. Montana, great improvement there. A lot of improvement across Idaho and big improvement across a lot of Oregon as well. But you see some of Washington actually flipping the switch the other way and introducing some drought across the area. So Oregon did improve here, but Washington kind of downgraded here as we've gone in through the summertime. But you can see a lot of the area here across the West is better, except mainly for Washington, largely. You can see some of that drought, that some of that severe drought moving into Southeast East Washington and across the west portion of the Cascades. We've talked about that before. But anyway, yeah, so that is what's going on. Be grateful for this trough here across Pacific Northwest. Keeps us from getting too darn right hot here. I mean, we're kind of far north, and that's the reason why. But anyway, yeah, we'll continue to watch this. We'll watch that precipitation signal as we get off towards the extended forecast as well. It's not really worth discussing too much right now. We're going to try to get some better, better model agreement here and just kind of wait till we get a little bit closer there. So anyway, we'll do this again tomorrow. Um, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Leave some comments below, and I will talk Talk to you guys then.